Well, hello everyone. It's an honor to be with you today. My name is Joshua Dubois. I led faith and community partnerships for President Obama in the White House. And now I'm honored to lead the country's largest black owned social impact firm, Values Partnerships, and Gage, an innovative market research company. And we have been working with the History Channel for years, helping them connect powerful shows to new audiences. And today I am so delighted to join with the 92nd Street Y and connect you with some amazing people and give you a bit of a glimpse at a groundbreaking new show. After Jackie will air on history on Saturday, June 18th at 8, 7 central. It is the absolutely riveting story of both Jackie Robinson cracking the door to the Major League, to Major League Baseball open, but also importantly, three men Kurt Flood, Bob Gibson, and Bill White, who kicked that door wide open. Because of them, Kurt, Bob, Bill, and Jackie, and their resilience and determination against all odds, that's why we can talk about Hank Aaron and Ken Griffey Jr. and Ricky Henderson and Frank Thomas and Mookie Betts and Aaron Judge and more. So if you know those names, you need to know the names of Kurt, Bob, and Bill. And you need to tune into After Jackie on History. Saturday, June 18th. And if you don't know already, you also need to know these two amazing men I'm gonna to introduce to you right now. After Jackie was executive produced by LeBron James and Stanley Nelson, and we are so delighted to have Mr. Nelson here with us today. As many of you probably know, Stanley Nelson is the foremost chronicler of the African-American experience working in nonfiction film today. His films combine compelling narratives with rich and deeply researched historical detail and he always shines a new light on even familiar subjects. He's a MacArthur Genius Fellow. He was awarded a Peabody for his work in 2016 and has received numerous honors over the course of his career. And in 2013, President Barack Obama presented him with the National Medal in the Humanities. So we're so delighted to have Stanley Nelson with us. And listen, After Jackie is in part about how athletes use their platforms to change the world and our Next panelist has partnered up with LeBron James to do exactly that. Jamal Henderson is the chief content officer of the Spring Hill Company, and he, LeBron, Maverick Carter, and their teams are taking the world of entertainment by storm, producing content that entertains, informs, and inspires at the same time. Uh, uh, Jamal um, uh, joined uh, the Spring Hill Company in 2015 and has successfully led the charge in setting up films like Space Jam, A New Legacy, House Party, producing Self Made, the Madam C.J. Walker limited series at Netflix, Shut Up and Dribble at Showtime, The Wall at NBC, and winning an Emmy for the Muhammad Ali limited docuseries, What's My Name, for HBO, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Stanley, Jamal, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's my pleasure. Pleasure. Well, let's get into it. First, it was a brief segment at the beginning of After Jackie, but the, the film explains how one person, a white player in the late 19th century by the name of Cap Anson, decided he didn't want to play with Black players anymore. And that set Black players back for over 50 years. In your experience, how much power does one person have to set history back or to move history forward? And, and what examples might you give of both? Um, I, I can start, you know, I, obviously, um, you know, politicians have, have huge powers. Um, one of the amazing things about the story we tell in After Jackie is, you know, most people don't know that, that African-Americans were part of baseball. And, and uh, you know, this one guy says, wait a minute, I don't want to play with Black people. But it, it, it makes sense because the, the Black players didn't have a vote. So, so the white players voted them out. And, and, you know, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. If you vote out the competition, if you vote out the black players, then it's gonna make your job a lot easier to do. And so I, I think that's part of that, you know, really an, an incredible story. But we see how, how much, you know, politicians have, we think about, um, you know, Donald Trump and, and Barack Obama and, and, and the differences in, in this country today, just because of, of you know, first the difference of, in the Barack and then again, Trump. Yeah, absolutely. So Stanley, you think Cap Anson, that might've been a self-interested move on his part. It might've not just been bigotry. He may have not wanted the competition there. He's trying to get some, he's trying to clear the field for himself possibly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think maybe, but but, uh, yeah. but uh, so the, 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 the players who voted definitely, 
you know i mean yeah. it was like, okay you know look if we could if we could get rid of the black players today you know in sports it, it, you know imagine if, if 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 the white players could vote to get the black players out of basketball wow yeah <laughs> I mean, no, you know, like, like, why not? <laughs> you know? That's a compelling comparison there. Uh, Jamal, uh, jump in on this one. You know, just the power, just these these seminal historical figures. What if they weren't there or with the power that they have? Could you speak to that? Yeah, look, I mean, I think Stanley nailed it. I mean, politics come to mind. I mean, we we just lived through a president that is that has set set things back in, in a lot of ways. And we're trying to fix that. Um, but I think, uh, but, but, you know, on the other side, I'm lucky enough to work with someone like LeBron James, who I think is doing the other thing. Right. And, you know, what we're, what he's doing in, in, uh, in Akron is, is just incredible and sort of unprecedented around sort of wrapping his arms around a community in a public private kind of way, uh, you know? Um, and so I think that, you know, as much as Cap Anson uh, tried to stop the music, he, you know, it wasn't as successful, but I think we can, we can push the push it forward. So I do think, you know, one one athlete, one person, uh, one figure can be that impactful. You know, we 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 tend to think about it on the negative side with the sort of world atrocities, but uh, but it also can can take place, you know, on the positive side. Yeah, that's so true. If LeBron was not in the place that he was, certainly, you know, Akron would not be uh, making the progress that it is. But so many other issues that he's um, lent his voice to. It kind of gets me to my next question. You know. Um, before we get to, to the story of Kirk Gibson and Bob Flood and Bill White, um, after Jackie recaps Jackie Robinson's trajectory, and one of the things that people might not have realized until they watch this is how despised he was by so many toward the end of his career because he wouldn't just shut up and play baseball, right? Because he had so many strong views. Why is it important to remember that disruptive, antagonistic part of Jackie Robinson's legacy? And, you know, Jamal, it, it brings to mind the fact that, yes, LeBron is beloved by so many, but because he pushes hard on issues that matter to him, he gets some pushback as well. Why is he it does. important for, um, to remember that not everyone is, 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 is beloved and that sometimes you have to ruffle some feathers? Jamal, you want to speak to that? Yeah, sure. And I, I give Stanley a ton of credit for this. I think this was a part, you know, this, this project really came together because of, you know, his work at Firelight and, you know, we're big admirers. This is our second time working together and, um, you know, he had done a lot of work with Major League Baseball on another project kind of inception. And, and, and Stanley, I remember as we started to talk about this, one of the things he wanted, no doubt, was to make sure people knew the full picture of the Jackie story, because the Jackie story, there is a lot of rose colored glasses with the Jackie story. And, um, you know, and his, his journey was a real one. And the brothers that came behind him had it even worse as, as, as this film shows, you know, and so um, I think uh, it's super important to show the whole scope of that because, uh, you know, as you mentioned with any figure that is taking a stand, uh, especially someone as beloved as Jackie was, who was sort of, um, you know, playing ball with the powers that be at one point. And then when you start to, you know, uh, talk about the movement and do other things in the same way, you know, someone like LeBron can do so freely now, at the time, it wasn't it wasn't as as easy, um, and not everybody agreed with him, uh, both in the black community and the white community. So uh, it's really it's really powerful, and I give a lot of credit to Stanley and and obviously, you know, our, our filmmaker Andre Gaines because I think they really held us honest to that, and they held the the, the story and the material honest to that because it's some sometimes under you know uh, you know under under told. Yeah, yeah, Stanley. Why was that important for you to show that that part of Jackie's story? I think you know it's a part of his story that that most people don't know. You know yeah. that, that that Jackie Robinson, in a way, you know his career had three different uh, pieces. You know that you know when when he broke into baseball, and you know black folks loved him, but you know there there were you know white folks around the country, you know who were throwing stuff at him and calling him names and and the whole thing. I mean, you know he had to put up with um, something that's unimaginable for most of us. You know, he was the only black player, you know, <laughs> in baseball. And so that's just, you know, amazing. So that's kind of the first part of his career. Then the middle of his career, you know, he's he's an all-star, he's a great player. You know, he's bringing um, Negro baseball, you know, from the Negro leagues to the major leagues. You know, he's stealing home, you know. My father used to tell me how, you know, they, they would hit a single and, you know, the, the outfielders would walk over and pick it up and kind of, you know, turn 
down, throw the lit, lob the ball in. Well, Jackie would go to second, you know, and 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 the second baseman would be like, "Well, you can't do that. <laughs> you, you're supposed to stop it first. And he's like, "No." And that was the way, you know, that 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 the Negro leagues played. So and and so he brought this excitement to to baseball, you know, and 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 he, and he was an all star. He was loved, and the Dodgers won the pennant and and, and all of that. And then. You know, as as, as he uh, reached the latter part of his career, he started speaking out. You know, and 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 he wasn't like the nice guy anymore. You know, you saw the angry Jackie Robinson. You know, you saw you know when the first baseman or second baseman would tag him out too hard, Jackie would jump up and get in their faces. You know, and and so uh, that wasn't liked. So now he's he's the angry Negro. <laughs> You know, and 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 the, the, some of the capital that he had gained, you know, in the first two thirds of his career, he lost. Um, and but he felt that he had to speak out, you know. And and okay, I've taken it. Now there's more of us in 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 the league. You know, we have succeeded. You're not going to put us out. And I'm going to tell you how I really feel. Mm. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And he did that. Yeah. It's funny, you say some of the capital he lost. And another way to say it might be some of the capital he used, right? He didn't just let it sit there and accumulate over time. He said, I'm going to push my chips in. I'm going to do it for my people. I'm going to do it for, for my own dignity, right? That's that's what he was standing up for as, as well. So, so true. And I'm so glad that you all painted that full picture in After Jackie. Again, Saturday, um, June 18th, 8, 7 Central. Please tune in. Now let's 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 pivot and focus on these amazing Cardinals, Bob Gibson, Kurt Flood, and Bill White. Quite simply, you know, before we get into some of the details, what do you think the legacy of these three men is? I think, that, you know, there's obviously a legacy in the game. You yeah. know, you know, Bob Gibson, you know, uh, was, the, was the pitcher. Um, and you know, not, you know, you got to be a baseball fan to know that, you know, his, his earned run average was so low that they had to lower the mound, you know, because, you know, the higher the mound is, the more you're throwing down at the batter. And then, and, you know, like, no, <laughs> they, they, so they lowered the mound and the mound stayed lowered. The mound's, <laughs> the mound's where it was because where it is now because of Bob Gibson, because he was that good, you know, and, and there's the legacy on the field, you know, Lou Brock's just stole bases. Kerr flood was, was an incredible outfielder. Uh, uh, Bill White, you know, was all-star first baseman. Um, so there's a legacy on the field, but there also is, is the legacy off the field. And, and, and in some ways that's just as important or maybe even more important with um, than their legacy on the field, you know, uh, Kerr flood, um, f sued for free agency and it changed all of sports and, and probably, probably beyond Jackie Robinson integrating baseball. It's probably the most important thing that's happened in American sports, right? Mm -hmm. Before Kurt Flood sued, um, when you played on, on a team, you played on the St. Louis Cardinals, you know, uh, you played on, you know, um, the Yankees or whatever, in whatever sport, at the end of your contract, they the team would offer you another contract, and you had to take it, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. whatever they are, you know. So you're making a hundred thousand. Well, you know, we're not going to give you a raise. You know, we're going to give you a hundred thousand. We're going to give you ninety. Or we're going to give you one hundred and ten. But that's what it what they gave you. Kerr Flood said, you know, no, that's that that should be illegal. If, if your contract is is up, then you are our free agent. You should be able to negotiate for you know, um, what you're worth. And that that's changed everything. Now you see contracts, you know, in, in all sports, you know, $40 million, you know, those kind of things. And that's because of free agency. And that's because Kurt Flood uh, sued baseball. Wow. What a legacy. Jamal, anything else there? I mean, obviously, um, the, the, you, you all have been so um, outspoken and vocal in terms of um, athletes knowing their power in the world. And these men seem to typify that. What, what do you think about their legacy? Yeah, no, I, I think exactly that. I think, I think you know, all, all those men have strong legacies. I think, you know, obviously Mr. Flood, you know, is, is the one that I think is still sort of not given the props. And I think hopefully this film will begin to do some of that um, because, yeah, he is, he is the beginning of this player empowerment movement, NIL, everything that we're talking about with regard to athletes sort of getting paid what they, what they deserve. And it's a big part of, you know, our company ethos of empowerment. 
It's obviously something LeBron has employed himself in his own career, uh, something we encourage. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just, it's all, all of those elements are reason why we were so attracted to the film and attracted to the story. And um, so, yeah, I can't really, can't really add anything more than that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't want to, I just want to add, I, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but. Yeah, no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, but, but, but I'll just say that, that what's not known is that Kurt Flood paid a huge price for doing what he did. You know, and 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 we we um, illustrate that in, in the film. So uh, you know, you want to watch the film, but you know, it, it didn't come without consequences. For sure, you got to watch. So make sure you tune in on Saturday. Um, and listen, speaking of no spoilers, but just giving a little bit of a preview. One of the things that I found fascinating, I, I should have known this story, but didn't, was um, about after Jackie. What wasn't actually in the baseball season, but it was focused on on spring training, you know, Stanley or, or Jamal, did you give a little bit of a preview there to tell me a little bit more about what happened in spring training in Florida with those Cardinals? Well, I mean, that, that's one of the great, the great stories in the film and one of the centerpieces in the film and a story that, 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 that people don't know. Um, but, you know, all baseball teams go to spring training, you know, they either go to California, you know, because they're, they're now going in, uh, in um, March, you know, and it's, it's, freezing up north it's still cold and snowy so they go to california or they go to florida and and most of the teams went to florida and, and when they go to florida uh, or when they went to florida it was segregated and the black people had to stay wherever you know um with families rooming houses everywhere and and the black players got together with the white players they got the white players also on board and went to the owner you know the bush family you know um, Anheuser Bush, you know, and went to them and said, um, you know, we can't do this anymore. We're yeah. a team. We're a team. And, and we're and gonna I, and I'm going to stop you there. Im importantly, you know, I, I will never inter interject in the middle of a um, of Stanley Nelson tell a story, but I'm going to do that because that's the cliffhanger. If you want to know what happened after <laughs> they went to talk to the owner, you have got to tune in. <laughs> after Jackie because that was so powerful for me and I won't share any more details but the 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 level of agency and power that those men um displayed and then to see what happened next was remarkable and so sorry to cut you off there Staley but I know no, I, I, I want y'all to tune in yeah go ahead please great and I think I think one of the things that 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 you know I'm just realizing you know in talking in with you guys here is is in 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 many ways you know, that that time that we're talking about after Jackie is the first time that athletes realize that they have power yeah. off the field, right? That they have power off the field. And that's something that, uh, you know, Spring Hill and, and what LeBron and, and, and Jamal and, and their team are doing, you know, probably represents at, at the highest level, you know, that 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 we we have power. And it's not only to, to score baskets or to make touchdowns or to hit home runs, but 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 by, by being an athlete, we have power. And, and one of the things that's fascinating about after Jackie, the story is is you see that coming about and see that being realized. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just something you um, and even in and, and I'm blanking on it. Who who was from California originally? Which which player was from? Um, I think it was Kurt Flood. I think it was Kurt. Right. And the, and the way that you all describe Kurt as growing up in a place where he didn't have to face um, a ton of discrimination, but then, you know, having to navigate the Jim Crow South, you just you, you shines light on the complexity. Right. And the and uh, of these individuals. And, you know, sometimes it, we just get into a binary either you know, you're a soaring achiever, you're Martin Luther King, or you're literally, you know, um, you're, you're underneath somebody's heel as a, as a sharecropper in the South, but Black people live very complex lives, right? And then, and as soon as the moment the opportunity was presented um, to, to stand up for themselves, they did, and they did it in some pretty powerful ways, and we see that um, in the film. Jamal, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but these three men really typify, typify that mantra of more than an athlete, you know, as, as Stanley shared, without Kurt Flood, we may have not had free agency, probably wouldn't have had it. Bill White, first president of the National League. What can we learn from these folks about the multiple roles that Black players can and should have today as, you know, as athletes, as business women and men, as advocates? Um, what, what is that 360 opportunity for a, uh, an African-American athlete today? 
Well, I mean, it's inspirational, you know, for sure. All these men, what they were doing um, is, is incredible. And what they went on to do is even more incredible um, because they, you know, they were just pillars in, in the community, but in, in business uh, and, and in some cases in baseball. Um, uh, and I think, you know, Stanley brought up the fact, Kurt, you know, probably took the brunt of it the most. Um, but, you know, uh, the other men you mentioned are, you know, we just, you know, went, went on to do amazing things. I think now the opportunity is tremendous, obviously, for athletes to see everybody doing a lot more than just what's on the field, um, you know, having interests outside of the sport. I mean, I grew up in that in that era where, you know, I, I just wanted the person to play ball. You know, uh, you didn't know anything. I didn't know any of the interests of my heroes. Um, I think now kids expect that. I think fans expect that. Um, and I think that, you know, more importantly, though, if you don't keep the main thing, the main thing, you can't get to the next thing. So I think one of the things that we always uh, at Spring Hill talk about with young athletes who want to tap in and be like, hey, I want to do what y'all are doing is like, hey, you still got to perform on the field. You know, LeBron yeah. James was an all star and, you know, well into his career before any of this happened. You know, um, and I think, you know, sometimes you have people maybe jump into the side hustles a little too soon. You know what I mean? And uh, now focusing on the main thing, because that's what got you here to Stanley's point, you know, you know, and then and then now you can help monetize that. Now you can lift others up. Now you can, you know, be a philanthropist, all the things that you might want to do. Um, but you got to keep the main thing, the main thing first uh, before before you can. So that's you know, that's that's what we try to do at Spring Hill. We try to you know be a beacon for that. Um, and then also, you know, we try to work with young athletes so that they can tap into us. You don't have to build it all yourself. You can kind of, you know, we can kind of be, you know, uh, a nice, a nice place for that. Yeah. That's phenomenal. You all are really creating a home for a lot of folks and, and developing a model, but you're right. You got to master your art and your craft first, and that enables everything else. We certainly saw that with these three men. Stanley question for you, you know, Jackie's story, of course, goes without saying is, is far more well-known than the players that um, people will experience and see and learn about in after Jackie, just like, you know, for example, Martin Luther King's story is more well-known than, you know, Diane Nash's and so many other advocates in the, in the civil rights movement. Should we be focusing less on the giants of our history and more on uncovering some of these leading voices? Or would you say that the interest in those giants opens up the door for others? Is it, is it, should, should we be actively pursuing some of these lesser known stories? I think both stories, both, you know, the, the giants and the people that stand behind them, their stories, both of those stories are really important and really valuable. And it, and it really just depends on where you are. You know, if, if you look back at, 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 at my films, you know, that, that, that I've done, you know, in, in my lifetime, the vast majority have been about the people behind. You know, the, you know, um, when we did the film on the Black Panthers, we wanted it to be about what, what they call the rank and file, you know. Mm -hmm. But in that, you know, we had to cover Huey Newton, we had to cover Elders Cleaver, we had to cover Kath, you know, you have to cover, you know, just like we have to cover Jackie too. You know, we, we're talking about Jackie, but we also talk about the, the, the people that came after Jackie. And I think their stories, for me, are, 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 are just really, really important and really valuable. And it's the thing that I, I kind of want to want to push, you know, because it's not, you know, it, it's something that's called the great man theory of history, you know, and, and yeah. it's usually the great man, because that's the way we tell history up, up till now, you know, it's not usually the great woman, but you know, it should be. But I, I think that that, you know, I'm not that much interested my personally in in the great man of history i'm i'm interested in 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 the people that 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 you know you you see the the you know the marches with martin luther king you know the people that were behind him right what did they have to do what did they have to put up up with and 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 so many times their bravery was equal to his you know because martin luther king would come into town and he would lead the march and then he'd leave and then the people who were behind him would have to stay there, right? And, and I remember when we were doing uh, Freedom Riders uh, and Freedom Summer, they 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 would print their names in the paper. You know, <laughs> they would print their name. That, okay, so you know the march, <laughs> you know, on on Saturday, you know, Miss Sadie, somebody went to the you know they print their names and they would be fired or you know ostracized or yeah. crossed. Burned on their lawn. So, so 
so many times the people that 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 that's were, that came next, you know, the, the next generation in some ways, you know, in baseball, the generation that came after Jackie um, really had to endure um, and, and amazing hardships and, and be incredibly brave. Yeah. Well, thank you for telling the stories of some of those folks that might not otherwise be known. If I take moderators privilege to speak a couple of those um, civil rights uh, names in, into the record book, recently spent some time with uh, James Lawson, who was the person who trained um, John Lewis and Diane Nash and others in nonviolent um, uh, techniques before the Nashville sit-ins. And he's still alive and thriving today. And so folks like him, Otis Moss Jr. up LeBron's way in Cleveland, Ohio, who um, was the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church with uh, Dr. King's father, believe it or not, and he's still leading in movements today. And so these folks are all around us. Some of them have um, passed on, but so many stories that still need to, uh, to be told. Listen, friends, we're, we're um, rounding the corner into our conclusion, but you know, it, it is not lost on me that even this partnership, Jamal, between you and LeBron and Stanley, this is something that that appears, and Stanley, you can correct me if I'm wrong, relatively new, this notion of athletes partnering with filmmakers to, to produce this type of content. That is very exciting. <laughs> you know, what do you see, one, um, Stanley, if this has happened a lot in, in, in other phases of, of your filmmaking career, definitely let, let me know. But to me, I'm seeing, you know, Kevin Durant, I'm seeing Russell Westbrook and others sort of stepping up in these ways, and certainly LeBron and, and Jamal and team. Um, is, is this a unique moment? And what are the promise and, and opportunities of these types of partners? Um, so Stanley, I'd love to hear from you and, and Jamal, you as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it, it's a unique moment in, in that I, I, I think it, 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 it probably started, you know, five, 10 years ago, but yeah. it's going to continue, you know, yeah. because I think it's been done to great success, you know, and, 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 I, and, and I love it. You know, if you call somebody up and, and you say, I'm working with LeBron James, they're going to take your call. You know, like, <laughs> what they're doing, you know, you know what I mean? Like they're going to take your call. And so that, that, that really helps. But I also think that, that one of the things, and I've never asked anybody this, but is that it's fun, right? You know, it's fun for, 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 for LeBron. It's fun for these guys to, to, to be doing something um, on a, on a different stage. You know, and, and in a way, it, it, it can be setting the stage for, for some of the things that they're going to do after their careers. But it's, it's, it's just really, I, I think, really, you know, if you think about Black athletes over the last 10 years, you know, Colin Kaepernick, you know, all the basketball players wearing, you know, Black Lives Matter shirts, you know, it's just different. And, and I, it's, it's a great moment, and it, it, but it's not unique because that, that implies that it's going to end. And I, I just think we're just at the beginning the beginning stages of, of athletes, you know, being involved in so many other things and, and you know, media is just one of them. Yeah. And Jamal, you've been a trailblazer here, man. You started, it's, I think I read 2015. And so in this era, this new era, which I agree is not going to end, right? This is just the beginning, but you were on the leading edge of that. What is that? What do you see as sort of the road ahead? What's the promise in front of you as you um, and LeBron are leveraging that platform to bring folks like Stanley and history together for t content like this? What's what's on the horizon for you? Yeah, I mean, look, it's 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 a big it's a big horizon. I mean, I think it's endless. I think we we you know we look at companies like Firelight, like the platform Stanley's building. We aspire to do that, you know, so it's not it's not a hobby what we're making up, you know, what we're doing. I think on I think, it, you know, it starts as a as a thing like, hey, this would be nice to tell that story. And it's a tradition of a lot of black athletes. Right. To, you know, um, Ali, you know, they all helped, you know, in ways or lent their name to things. Uh, and then what we've tried to build is now, you know, make it a real a real media concern and take on investment and, you know, um, you know, be an independent studio. So where we're financing, developing, um, partnering with, with folks, uh, best in class, people we admire like Stanley, you know, so uh, it goes from, you know, it goes from having fun to Stanley's point, which I agree with for most guys to, you know, actually, you know, sort of making things both documentary, scripted, podcasts, everything. So, um, so I think, I think the, the it's, 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 it's going to be, you know, you know, it's endless potential in yeah. terms of what's what's possible. 
Jamal, any LeBron James albums to announce? We're going to go in the Shaq direction and do any <laughs> hip hop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, you know what? I, you know, I, I'm not going to break any news here. I'm okay. not going to break any news here. That is, yeah, it's typically, right? It typically goes, you know, Eddie Murphy. It starts Shaq. with the album, man. Shaq Fu, yeah. you know, all that kind of Typically stuff. starts with the album. Yeah, we've avoided the album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Just getting there. Um, So, hey, listen. Saturday, June 18th, 8, 7 Central, after Jackie's going to be on history. Everybody needs to tune in. When they do, Stanley and Jamal, what do you want them to take away? What should they be looking for? What do you want them to take away from this amazing project? I, I think that, that you know, there, there's a whole bunch of, of stories that, that we don't know about African-American history. And, and so many great, great players, so many people that sacrificed, the people that, that did great things. We're talking about, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, and, and, and they were fighting for equality and fighting for uh, a cha- change in, in, in our world and in our lives. And, and um, you know, it's also a sports story. I mean, we, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to forget that. That's the great thing about sports story, you know, cut to the game, you know, and, and it, it's, it's just a great story. Yeah. How about you, Jamal? hundred percent. Yeah. Just a great story about, you know, equality, about brothers that made a big change, made a big difference. Um, and, and, you know, to, to Stanley's point, which all his films do is shining a light on that, that other layer of folks beyond Jackie, which I think is so important and and, and kudos to, to him and the rest of the team because we were able to leverage, you know, what I think people are familiar with to bring them into a story like this. I think Stanley would agree that pitching it one pitching it without that might might not have made it the story land. And so I'm just excited that we were able to get the story told about um, these amazing brothers and this amazing, amazing time in, in history. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, it's a story that might not have been told without you, Stanley, without you, Jamal, and and LeBron. And this conversation wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the 92nd Street Y. So we're grateful to you and certainly to our friends at History for giving such a platform to such an important story. Listen, y'all, tune in on Saturday and then to all the re-airs as well. Let's show um, folks that the lives of these men continue to matter. They continue to reverberate. Uh, My son, Little League Baseball, actually T-ball now, just wrapped up his T-ball games yesterday. And I can't wait to tell him about these guys that I I saw on After Jackie. Um, And and, and, uh, when it comes to Bob Kipson, remember the inside of the plate. And then come back to me afterwards on Twitter after you watch that part of the the show. So it's huge thank you to Stanley Nelson and Jamal Henderson to the 92nd Street wide history to everyone that's a part of this project and we can't wait for you all to see it thanks everyone have a great evening thank you so much